This video is aimed at content designers and content editors. Um, I'm a content designer myself and I just wanted to give you a quick tour of Locals of Drupal and just to explain a few different things and how to use the system. So when you start, this is generally where I would expect you would land. It has your um, profile here so you can click this edit button and it allows you to change your username and uh, email address. Next uh, you have these menus at the top here so this manage uh, link here turns this toolbar on and off. The main one we're going to talk about is content. So if you click on content, it takes you to this screen or as you can see, you can access the options here. This is what I would call the content dashboard and it has most of the functions that I use. The bulk of the page is a chronological list of all of the content that's within the site. So you can see the most recent page was created. Um, so yesterday. Uh, and you can see in the different columns, you've got title of the pages, you've got the content type. So there's various content types within local gov Drupal. So we've got things like guides, directories, service pages, step-by-steps. If you're interested in knowing how to create all those different content types, we do have individual videos in the channel about that. You'll see the author of the page, the status, so whether it's published, archived, in review or draft. You'll see the date and time it was last updated. And then this last column here, you can click edit and it will take you into the edit view of the page. Or if you click this drop down here, you can actually delete the page here as well. It will give you a warning before it does that. So this is all of the most recent content. Um, if you want to add new content, there is this add content blue button at the top right hand side here, or you can, can go content, add content, and then you will see all the different content types. So if you want to add a new service page, for instance, you just click that and it will open up a blank template for you and you can uh, fill that in. <coughs> So going back to the content dashboard, um, there's also this uh, search field here where you can search for page titles. You can filter all content types. So if you just want to see service pages, you then click filter and it will just show you all of the service pages. And then you can just click reset and that will take you back to the view of all content. You can see pages that are published or unpublished. And then if you have pages that are in more than one language, you can filter them here. <coughs> Next um, on the top here, we have page components. So page components are centrally held pieces of information that are shared widely across the site. Um, so you can see here, these are page components. We're not going to go into how to create them, but this is how you see all the different um, types of, uh, not the types, so this, all the individual page components are listed here. Files, generally I don't use this tab very much, but it does list all the different files. I, I find that the media tab here is more useful because it lists all files and all images in one place. You can see the name, the type of file or media item who authored it, status, when it was updated. And again, you can edit it um, by clicking this edit button and that you could remove a file, add a new one, but we're not gonna go into media library today. But anyway, that is the media library. Um, the next one is directory facets. So this is covered in the directories video, but this is where you see all the different, this is part of, um, facets are part of how you create a directory. And this is, they're listed here. Geo is to do with mapping. So this is a, this top one here, for instance, I created this yesterday. This is used in directories. Um, this is all the different addresses that we have created on the site and who created them, if it's enabled, etc. So that's listed here. 
and then finally alert banners so we only have one at the moment alert banners um, sit within uh, the top of the page and they can either be universal or within the section and it's a way of alerting the user to an announcement so for this one here it's we put this up because it, um, it it's an alpha site and we want people to know that it's being tested so that's an announcement message that's gone across the whole site and you can see it's live but this is where they would be listed and then there's an add alert banner button here for you to add a new one so if you click back on content that will take you back to our main page um, and then there's a secondary menu here where we've got overview moderated content and approvals dashboard so moderated content is content that is um, it says it here actually only pending versus the content that's the drafts are listed here so that's if you want to know if anyone's working on content that would be listed here and then you've got approvals dashboard so you can see here only content in review is listed here so this is a way of having a sort of publication workflow so if you <clears throat> have a team of people that are working on content that needs reviewing or two eyeing then if they set it to needs review it would appear here and it would be listed here so that's content um, in terms of other things we won't go into all of it but there's a few things that of interest so under structure you've got menus so there's various menus that you might want to update so we've got footer so the footer menu here is this menu at the bottom in grey so if you wanted to amend that or add a link you've got add link here at the top right um, you can add a new link there you've got main navigation so this is here we've got contact us so that is this link here that sits in this top bar. We've also got service menu. So this is this menu that sits here. So you could edit these by just clicking edit or you've got this blue add link button here. This won't be the same for all sites. This is just how this site has been laid out. But I just wanted to show you that menus come into structure. So the next thing I just wanted to show you is some of the universal features within editing. So within a page, you will always have this, um, these options here, view, edit, delete, revisions. So revisions allows you to compare different versions of a page. So in the right hand column is the, the current version. If you want to compare it, so if you want to compare it to this version, for instance, you click those two buttons and there's this compare selected revisions that will show you any changes so you can see here in green that's something that's been added whereas if you see something in this peachy pink color it, and it's crossed out that's obviously something that's been deleted so that's how you see the different versions of a, a page then you've got um, delete as well, so you can delete the page. Um, and then we've got edit. So this is the edit view of this page. So there's a few things in here to talk about. So there's this toolbar here, which you'll see in all of the body fields. It's pretty universal, so it's got things like bulleting, hyperlinks, um, formatting here. We've got add an image, add an image from a media library. You can see the source code and then this final one here is how you add a table so that's pretty universal um, we've got this formatting up drop down here so this is how you apply heading styles and then this styling one so if you want to style some of the content there's various things open to you as a content designer one of the things is um, it depends on how uh, this is this is how our design system has been created and there's different styles available to me um, so you can see here all of these different things visually make the text look different and it has a different function so as an example inset text does this to the text and it allows the it allows me to highlight some text but on a permanent basis whereas if you highlighted this bit of text but you decided it was a bit of text that was urgent and you need someone to see it 
um, we have these alert patterns. So this one's called alert info and it applies this pattern. So within our design system, this is an alert pattern and um, it's meant to be a temporary way of alerting to someone, to something. For instance, this deadline is coming up or um, the a price of something has changed and you want someone to know about it. <clears throat> so that's that toolbar. Um, on the right hand side here, there is various things here that you probably need to be aware of. This first one here where it says create new revisions it's actually been switched off. That's because the decision's been made that we always want a revision made of a page, but depending on your organization, you could have that switched um, on so that it doesn't create new revisions, but this does. As you can see here, revisions are required. Um, this is where you add a log message. So you can see here, briefly describe the changes you've made. So I added a new alert banner, alerting people to a price range. So just it's kept as a permanent note of why the change was made. It's particularly useful if someone's approving a page and they, want to, they don't need to ask you separately what was changed on the page. Then you have this drop down here. So you can change the page to draft, review, published or archived. So if you change it to draft, it would appear in that moderated content list. And if you changed it to review, it would appear in the approvals dashboard. There's a delete button. Obviously it will delete the page, but it would warn you. Um, there's URL redirects. So this is how you add a redirect to this page. It would just open up a secondary window and you just put the two URLs in. Um, and then you have URL structure. So as standard, it's the site is set to generate automatic URLs automatically. So whenever it's it's generated from the parent structure. So wherever I place this page, so this page, it's this parent structure here. It's creating the the URL structure. You can untick it. Um, so as you can say here, it says uncheck this to create a custom alias below. So you can create your own URL if you wanted to. Then you've got authoring. So this is who authored it. You can change that and change the date it was authored if you so wanted to. So those are the different options you have. Um, so if you go back to content here, that takes you back to this um, main dashboard. Um, in terms of these menus, as I say, it probably looks like there's a lot more going on than actually you would see, but generally, as I say, structure and content are the two places that I tend to find I use the most. So that's the end of the introduction to Local Gov Drupal. As I mentioned before, we do have various versions of videos on different content types and how to create them. So check those out if you're interested in those. And we do produce new videos. So if you are interested in subscribing, if you hit the subscribe button, you'll be alerted whenever we release a new video. Thank you for your time.